Chapter 1 of the Book of Jasher. The author is unknown. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by C.J. Plogue. The Book of Jasher. This is the book of the generations of man whom God created upon the earth on the day when the Lord God made heaven and earth. Chapter 1. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And God created man in his own image. And God formed man from the ground, and he blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul endowed with speech. And the Lord said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make unto him a helpmate. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took away one of his ribs, and he built flesh upon it, and formed it, and brought it to Adam. And Adam awoke from his sleep, and behold, a woman was standing before him. And he said, This is a bone of my bones, and it shall be called woman, for this has been taken from man. And Adam called her name Eve, for she was the mother of all living. And God blessed them, and called their names Adam and Eve in the day that he created them. And the Lord God said, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth. And the Lord God took Adam and his wife, and he placed them in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And he commanded them and said unto them, From every tree of the garden you may eat, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die. And when God had blessed and commanded them, he went from them, and Adam and his wife dwelt in the garden according to the command which the Lord had commanded them. And the serpent which God had created with them in the earth came to them to incite them to transgress the command of God which he had commanded them. And the serpent enticed and persuaded the woman to eat from the tree of knowledge. And the woman hearkened to the voice of the serpent, and she transgressed the word of God, and took from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and she ate. And she took from it and gave also to her husband, and he ate. And Adam and his wife transgressed the command of God which he commanded them, and God knew it, and his anger was kindled against them, and he cursed them. And the Lord God drove them that day from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which they were taken, and they went and dwelt at the east of the Garden of Eden. And Adam knew his wife Eve, and she bore two sons and three daughters. And she called the name of the firstborn Cain, saying, I have obtained a man from the Lord, and the name of the other she called Abel. For she said, In vanity we came into the earth, and in vanity we shall be taken from it. And the boys grew up, and their father gave them a possession in the land, and Cain was a tiller of the ground, and Abel a keeper of the sheep. And it was at the expiration of a few years that they brought an approximating offering to the Lord, and Cain brought from the fruit of the ground, and Abel brought from the firstlings of his flock from the fat thereof. And God turned and inclined to Abel in his offering, and a fire came down from the Lord from heaven and consumed it. And unto Cain and his offering the Lord did not turn, and he did not incline to it, for he had brought from the inferior fruit of the ground before the Lord. And Cain was jealous against his brother Abel on account of this, and he sought a pretext to slay him. And in some time after, Cain and Abel his brother went one day into the field to do their work, and they were both in the field, Cain tilling and plowing his ground, and Abel feeding his flock, And the flock passed that part which Cain had plowed in the ground, and it sorely grieved Cain on this account. And Cain approached his brother Abel in anger, and said unto him, What is there between me and thee that thou comest to dwell and bring thy flock to feed in my land? And Abel answered his brother Cain, and said unto him, What is there between me and thee that thou shalt eat the flesh of my flock, and clothe thyself with their wool? And now therefore put off the wool of my sheep with which thou hast clothed thyself, and recompense me for their fruit and flesh, which thou hast eaten, and when thou shalt have done this, I will then go from thy land as thou hast said. And Cain said to his brother Abel, Surely if I slay thee this day, who will require thy blood from me? And Abel answered Cain, saying, Surely God who has made us in the earth, he will avenge my cause and he will require my blood from thee shouldst thou slay me. For the Lord is the judge and the arbiter, and it is he who will requite man according to his evil, and the wicked man according to the wickedness that he may do upon earth. And now if thou shouldst slay me here, 
Surely God knoweth thy secret views, and will judge thee for the evil which thou didst declare to do unto me this day. And when Cain heard the words which Abel his brother had spoken, behold, the anger of Cain was kindled against his brother Abel for declaring this thing. And Cain hastened and rose up and took the iron part of his plowing instrument, with which he suddenly smote his brother, and he slew him. And Cain spilt the blood of his brother Abel upon the earth, and the blood of Abel streamed upon the earth before the flock. And after this Cain repented, having slain his brother, and he was sadly grieved, and he wept over him, and it vexed him exceedingly. And Cain rose up and dug a hole in the field wherein he put his brother's body, and he turned the dust over it. And the Lord knew what Cain had done to his brother. And the Lord appeared to Cain and said unto him, Where is Abel thy brother that was with thee? And Cain dissembled and said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said unto him, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground where thou hast slain him. For thou hast slain thy brother, and hast dissembled before me, and didst imagine in thy heart that I saw thee not, nor knew all thy actions. But thou didst this thing, and didst slay thy brother for naught, and because he spoke rightly to thee, and now, therefore, cursed be thou from the ground which opened its mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand, and wherein thou didst bury him. And it shall be, when thou shalt till it, it shall no more give to thee its strength, as in the beginning. For thorns and thistles shall the ground produce, and thou shalt be moving and wandering in the earth until the day of thy death. And at that time Cain went out from the presence of the Lord from the place where he was, and he went moving and wandering in the land towards the east of Eden, he and all belonging to him. And Cain knew his wife in those days, and she conceived and bare a son and he called his name Enoch, saying, In that time the Lord began to give him rest and quiet in the earth. And at that time Cain also began to build a city, and he built the city, and he called the name of the city Enoch, according to the name of his son, for in those days the Lord had given him rest upon the earth, and he did not move about and wonder as in the beginning. And Irad was born to Enoch, and Irad begat Mequiel, and Mekuel begat Methusael. End of chapter 1
and he reigned over all the sons of men, and he led the sons of men to wisdom and knowledge. For Canaan was a very wise man, and had understanding in all wisdom, and with his wisdom he ruled over spirits and demons. And Canaan knew by his wisdom that God would destroy the sons of men for having sinned upon the earth, and that the Lord would in the latter days bring upon them the waters of the flood. And in those days Canaan wrote upon tablets of stone what was to take place in time to come, and he put them in his treasures. And Canaan reigned over the whole earth, and he turned some of the sons of men to the service of God. And when Canaan was seventy years old, he begat three sons and two daughters, and these are the names of the children of Canaan. The name of the firstborn, Malalel, the second, Inan, the third, Mirad, and their sisters were Ada and Zillah. These are the five children of Canaan that were born to him. And Lamech, the son of Methusel, became related to Canaan by marriage, and he took his two daughters for his wives. And Ada conceived and bare a son to Lamech, and she called his name Jabal. And she again conceived and bare a son, and called his name Jubal. And Zillah, her sister, was barren in those days, and had no offspring. For in those days the sons of men began to trespass against God, and to transgress the commandments which he had commanded to Adam to be fruitful and multiply in the earth. And some of the sons of men caused their wives to drink a draught that would render them barren, in order that they might retain their figures and whereby their beautiful appearance might not fade. And when the sons of men caused some of their wives to drink, Zillah drank with them. And the childbearing women appeared abominable in the sight of their husbands, as widows, whilst their husbands lived, for to the barren ones only they were attached. And in the end days and years, when Zillah became old, the Lord opened her womb. And she conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Tubal Cain, saying, After I had withered away, have I obtained him from the Almighty God. And she conceived again and bare a daughter, and she called her name Nama. For she said, After I had withered away, have I obtained pleasure and delight. And Lamech was old, and advanced in years, and his eyes were dim, that he could not see. And Tubal Cain, his son, was leading him. And it was one day that Lamech went into the field, and Tubal Cain, his son, was with him. And whilst they were walking in the field, Cain, the son of Adam, advanced towards them. For Lamech was very old and could not see much, and Tubal Cain, his son, was very young. And Tubal Cain told his father to draw his bow, and with the arrows he smote Cain, who was yet far off, and he slew him, for he appeared to them to be an animal. And the arrows entered Cain's body, although he was distant from them, and he fell to the ground and died. And the Lord requited Cain's evil according to his wickedness which he had done to his brother Abel, according to the word of the Lord which he had spoken. And it came to pass when Cain had died, that Lamech and Tubal went to see the animal which they had slain, and they saw, and behold, Cain their grandfather was fallen dead upon the earth. And Lamech was very much grieved at having done this, and in clapping his hands together he struck his son and caused his death. And the wives of Lamech heard what Lamech had done, and they sought to kill him. And the wives of Lamech hated him from that day, because he slew Cain and Tubal Cain, and the wives of Lamech separated from him and would not hearken to him in those days. And Lamech came to his wives, and he pressed them to listen, to hear him about this matter. And he said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, O wives of Lamech, attend to my words, for now you have imagined and said that I slew a man with my wounds and a child with my stripes for their having done no violence. But surely know that I am old and gray-headed, and that my eyes are heavy through age, and I did this thing unknowingly. And the wives of Lamech listened to him in this matter, and they returned to him with the advice of their father Adam. But they bore no children to him from that time, knowing that God's anger was increasing in those days against the sons of men, to destroy them with the waters of the flood for their evil doings. And Mahalel the son of Canaan lived sixty-five years, and he begat Jared. And Jared lived sixty-two years, and he begat Enoch. End of chapter 2Chapter 3 of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by C. J. Plogue. Chapter 3 And Enoch lived sixty five years, and he begat Methuselah. 
And Enoch walked with God after having begat Methuselah, and he served the Lord and despised the evil ways of men. And the soul of Enoch was wrapped up in the instruction of the Lord, in knowledge and in understanding, and he wisely retired from the sons of men, and secreted himself away from them for many days. And it was at the expiration of many years whilst he was serving the Lord, and praying before him in his house, that an angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Rise, and go forth from thy house, and from the place where thou dost hide thyself, and appear to the sons of men, in order that thou mayest teach them the way in which they should go, and the work which they must accomplish to enter in the ways of God. And Enoch rose up according to the word of the Lord, and went forth from his house, from his place, and from the chamber in which he was concealed. And he went to the sons of men and taught them the ways of the Lord, and at that time assembled the sons of men and acquainted them with the instruction of the Lord. And he ordered it to be proclaimed in all places where the sons of men dwelt, saying, Where is the man who wishes to know the ways of the Lord and good works? Let him come to Enoch. And all the sons of men then assembled to him, for all who desired this thing went to Enoch. And Enoch reigned over the sons of men according to the word of the Lord, and they came and bowed to him, and they heard his word. And the Spirit of God was upon Enoch, and he taught all his men the wisdom of God and his ways, and the sons of men served the Lord all the days of Enoch, and they came to hear his wisdom. And all the kings of the sons of men, both first and last, together with their princes and judges, came to Enoch when they heard of his wisdom, and they bowed down to him, and they also required of Enoch to reign over them, to which he consented. And they assembled in all one hundred and thirty kings and princes, and they made Enoch king over them, and they were all under his power and command. And Enoch taught them wisdom, knowledge, and the ways of the Lord, and he made peace amongst them, and peace was throughout the earth during the life of Enoch. And Enoch reigned over the sons of men two hundred and forty-three years, and he did justice and righteousness with all his people, and he led them in the ways of the Lord. And these are the generations of Enoch, Methuselah, Elisha, and Elimelech, three sons, and their sisters were Melchah and Nama, and Methuselah lived eighty-seven years, and he begat Lamech. And it was in the fifty-sixth year of the life of Lamech when Adam died. Nine hundred and thirty years old was he at his death, and his two sons with Enoch and Methuselah his son buried him with great pomp, as at the burial of kings in the cave which God had told him. And in that place all the sons of men made a great mourning and weeping on account of Adam. It has therefore become a custom among the sons of men to this day. And Adam died because he ate of the tree of knowledge, he and his children after him as the Lord God had spoken. And it was in the year of Adam's death, which was the two hundred and forty-third year of the reign of Enoch in that time, Enoch resolved to separate himself from the sons of men, and to secrete himself as at first, in order to serve the Lord. And Enoch did so, but did not entirely secrete himself from them, but kept away from the sons of men three days, and then went to them for one day. And during the three days that he was in his chamber, he prayed to and praised the Lord his God, and the day on which he went and appeared to his subjects, he taught them the ways of the Lord, and all they asked him about the Lord he told them. And he did in this manner for many years, and he afterward concealed himself for six days, and appeared to his people one day in seven, and after that once in a month, and then once in a year, until all the kings, princes, and sons of men sought for him, and desired again to see the face of Enoch, and to hear his word, but they could not, as all the sons of men were greatly afraid of Enoch, and they feared to approach him on account of the godlike awe that was seated upon his countenance. Therefore no man could look at him, fearing he might be punished and die. And all the kings and princes resolved to assemble the sons of men, and to come to Enoch, thinking that they might all speak to him at the time when he should come forth amongst them, and they did so. And the day came when Enoch went forth, and they all assembled and came to him. And Enoch spoke to them the words of the Lord, and he taught them wisdom and knowledge. And they bowed down before him, and they said, May the king live! May the king live! And in some time after, when the kings and princes and the sons of men were speaking to Enoch, and Enoch was teaching them the ways of God, behold, an angel of the Lord then called unto Enoch from heaven, 
and wished to bring him up to heaven, to make him reign there over the sons of God, as he had reigned over the sons of men upon the earth. When at that time Enoch heard this, he went and assembled all the inhabitants of the earth, and taught them wisdom and knowledge, and gave them divine instructions. And he said to them, I have been required to ascend into heaven. I therefore do not know the day of my going. And now therefore I will teach you wisdom and knowledge, and will give you instruction before I leave you, how to act upon the earth whereby you may live. And he did so. And he taught them wisdom and knowledge, and gave them instruction, and he reproved them. And he placed before them statutes and judgments to do upon earth. And he made peace amongst them, and he taught them everlasting life, and dwelt with them some time teaching them all these things. And at that time the sons of men were with Enoch, and Enoch was speaking to them, and they lifted up their eyes, and the likeness of a great horse descending from heaven, and the horse paced in the air. And they told Enoch what they had seen, and Enoch said to them, On my account does this horse descend upon earth. The time is come when I must go from you, and I shall no more be seeing you. And the horse descended at that time, and stood before Enoch, and all the sons of men that were with Enoch saw him. And Enoch then again ordered a voice to be proclaimed, saying, Where is the man who delighteth to know the ways of the Lord his God? Let him come this day to Enoch before he is taken from us. And all the sons of men assembled and came to Enoch that day. And all the kings of the earth with their princes and counselors remained with him that day. And Enoch then taught the sons of men wisdom and knowledge, and gave them divine instruction. And he bade them serve the Lord and walk in his ways all the days of their lives, and he continued to make peace amongst them. And it was after this that he rose up and rode upon the horse, and he went forth and all the sons of men went after him, about eight hundred thousand men, and they went with him one day's journey. And the second day he said to them, Return home to your tents. Why will you go? Perhaps you may die. And some of them went from him, and those that remained went with him six days' journey. And Enoch said to them every day, Return to your tents, lest you may die. But they were not willing to return, and they went with him. And on the sixth day some of the men remained and clung to him. And they said to him, We will go with thee to the place where thou goest. As the Lord liveth, death only shall separate us. And they urged so much to go with him that he ceased speaking to them, and they went after him and would not return. And when the kings returned, they caused a census to be taken, in order to know the number of remaining men that went with Enoch. And it was upon the seventh day that Enoch ascended into heaven in a whirlwind, with horses and chariots of fire. And on the eighth day all the kings that had been with Enoch sent to bring back the number of men that were with Enoch in that place from which he ascended into heaven. And all those kings went to the place, and they found the earth there filled with snow, and upon the snow were large stones of snow. And one said to the other, Come, let us break through this snow, and see, perhaps the men that remained with Enoch are dead, and are now under these stones of snow. And they searched, but could not find him, for he had ascended into heaven. End of chapter 3「Chapter four. And all the days that Enoch lived upon the earth were three hundred and sixty-five years. And when Enoch had ascended into heaven, all the kings of the earth rose and took Methuselah his son, and anointed him, and they caused him to reign over them in the place of his father. And Methuselah acted uprightly in the sight of God, as his father Enoch had taught him, and he likewise, during the whole of his life, taught the sons of men wisdom, knowledge, and the fear of God, and he did not turn from the good way, either to the right or to the left. But in the latter days of Methuselah the sons of men turned from the Lord, they corrupted the earth, they robbed and plundered each other, and they rebelled against God, and they transgressed, and they corrupted their ways and would not hearken to the voice of Methuselah, but rebelled against him. And the Lord was exceedingly wroth against them, and the Lord continued to destroy the seed in those days, so that there was neither sowing nor reaping in the earth. For when they sowed the ground in order that they might obtain food for their support, behold, thorns and thistles were produced which they did not sow. And still the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways, and their hands were still extended, 
to do evil in the sight of God. And they provoked the Lord with their evil ways, and the Lord was very wroth, and repented that he had made man. And he thought to destroy and annihilate them, and he did so. In those days when Lamech the son of Methuselah was one hundred and sixty years old, Seth the son of Adam died. And all the days that Seth lived were nine hundred and twelve years, and he died. And Lamech was one hundred and eighty years old, when he took Ashmoah, the daughter of Elisha, the son of Enoch his uncle, and she conceived. And at that time the sons of men sowed the ground, and a little food was produced. Yet the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways, and they trespassed and rebelled against God. And the wife of Lamech conceived and bare him a son at that time, at the revolution of the year. And Methuselah called his name Noah, saying the earth was in his days at rest and free from corruption, and Lamech his father called his name Manachem, saying, This one shall comfort us in our works and miserable toil in the earth which God has cursed. And the child grew up and was weaned, and he went in the ways of his father Methuselah, perfect and upright with God. And all the sons of men departed from the ways of the Lord in those days, as they multiplied upon the face of the earth with sons and daughters. And they taught one another their evil practices, and they continued sinning against the Lord. And every man made unto himself a god, and they robbed and plundered every man his neighbor as well as his relative, and they corrupted the earth, and the earth was filled with violence. And their judges and rulers went to the daughters of men, and took their wives by force from their husbands according to their choice. And the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the air, and taught the mixture of animals of one species with the other, in order therewith to provoke the Lord. And God saw the whole earth, and it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted its ways upon earth, all men and all animals. And the Lord said, I will blot out man that I created from the face of the earth, yea, from man to the birds of the air, together with cattle and beasts that are in the field, for I repent that I made them. And all men who walked in the ways of the Lord died in those days before the Lord brought the evil upon man which he had declared, for this was from the Lord, that they should not see the evil which the Lord spoke of concerning the sons of men. And Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord chose him and his children to raise up seed from them upon the face of the whole earth. End of chapter 4、Chapter、and it was in the eighty fourth year of the life of Noah that Enoch the son of Seth died. He was nine hundred and five years old at his death. And in the one hundred and seventy ninth year of the life of Noah, Canaan the son of Enosh died, and all the days of Canaan were nine hundred and ten years, and he died. And in the two hundred and thirty fourth year of the life of Noah, Malalel the son of Canaan died, and the days of Malalel were eight hundred and ninety five years, and he died. And Jared the son of Malalel died in those days, in the three hundred and thirty sixth year of the life of Noah. And all the days of Jared were nine hundred and sixty two years, and he died. And all who followed the Lord died in those days before they saw the evil which God declared to do upon the earth. And after the lapse of many years, in the four hundred and eightieth year of the life of Noah, when all those men who followed the Lord had died away from amongst the sons of men, and only Methuselah was then left, God said unto Noah and Methuselah, saying, Speak ye. And proclaim to the sons of men, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Return from your evil ways and forsake your works, and the Lord will repent of the evil that he declared to do to you, so that it shall not come to pass. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I give you a period of one hundred and twenty years. If you will turn to me and forsake your evil ways, then will I also turn away from the evil which I told you, and it shall not exist, saith the Lord. And Noah and Methuselah spoke all the words of the Lord to the sons of men day after day, constantly speaking to them. But the sons of men would not hearken to them, nor incline their ears to their words, and they were stiff necked. And the Lord granted them a period of one hundred and twenty years, saying, If they will return, then will God repent of the evil 
so as not to destroy the earth. And Noah, the son of Lamech, refrained from taking a wife in those days to beget children, for he said, Surely now God will destroy the earth. Wherefore then shall I beget children? And Noah was a just man. He was perfect in his generation, and the Lord chose him to raise up seed from his seed upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Noah, Take unto thee a wife, and beget children, for I have seen thee righteous before me in this generation. And thou shalt raise up seed, and thy children with thee in the midst of the earth. And Noah went and took a wife, and he chose Naamah, the daughter of Enoch, and she was five hundred and eighty years old. And Noah was four hundred and ninety years old when he took Naamah for a wife. And Naamah conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Japheth, saying, God has enlarged me in the earth. And she conceived again and bare a son, and he called his name Shem, saying, God has made me a remnant to raise up seed in the midst of the earth. And Noah was five hundred and two years old when Naamah bare Shem, and the boys grew up and went in the ways of the Lord in all that Methuselah and Noah their father taught them. And Lamech, the father of Noah, died in those days. Yet verily he did not go with all his heart in the ways of his father, and he died in the hundred and ninety-fifth year of the life of Noah. And all the days of Lamech were seven hundred and seventy years, and he died. And all the sons of men who knew the Lord died in that year before the Lord brought evil upon them. For the Lord willed them to die so as not to behold the evil that God would bring upon their brothers and relatives, as he had so declared to do. In that time the Lord said to Noah and Methuselah, Stand forth and proclaim to the sons of men all the words that I spoke to you in those days. Peradventure they may turn from their evil ways, and I will then repent of the evil, and will not bring it. And Noah and Methuselah stood forth and said in the ears of the sons of men all that God had spoken concerning them. But the sons of men would not hearken, neither would they incline their ears to all their declarations. And it was after this that the Lord said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me on account of their evil deeds, and behold, I will destroy the earth. And do thou take unto thee gopher wood, and go to a certain place, and make a large ark, and place it in that spot. And thus shalt thou make it. Three hundred cubits at its length, fifty cubits broad, and thirty cubits high. And thou shalt make unto thee a door, open at its side, and to a cubit thou shalt finish above, and cover it within, and without, with pitch. And behold, I will bring the flood of waters upon the earth, and all flesh be destroyed from under the heavens, all that is upon earth shall perish. And thou and thy household shall go and gather two couple of all living things, male and female, and shall bring them to the ark to raise up seed from them upon earth. And gather unto thee all food that is eaten by all the animals, that there may be food for thee and for them. And thou shalt choose for thy sons three maidens from the daughters of men, and they shall be wives to thy sons. And Noah rose up, and he made the ark in the place where God had commanded him, and Noah did as God had ordered him. In his five hundred and ninety-fifth year Noah commenced to make the ark, and he made the ark in five years, as the Lord had commanded. Then Noah took the three daughters of Eliakim, the son of Methuselah, for wives, for his sons, as the Lord had commanded Noah. And it was at that time Methuselah, the son of Enoch, died. Nine hundred and sixty years old was he at his death. End of chapter 5、chapter six、of the Book of Jasher This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by C. J. Plogue. Chapter six. At that time, after the death of Methuselah, the Lord said to Noah, "Go thou with thy household into the ark. Behold, I will gather to thee all the animals of the earth, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the air, and they shall all come and surround the ark. And thou shalt go and seat thyself by the doors of the ark, and all the beasts, the animals, and the fowls shall assemble and place themselves before thee." And such of them as shall come and crouch before thee shalt thou take and deliver into the hands of thy sons, who shall bring them to the ark. And all that will stand before thee thou shalt leave. And the Lord brought this about on the next day, and animals, beasts, and fowls came in great multitudes and surrounded the ark. And Noah went and seated himself by the door of the ark, 
and of all flesh that crouched before him he brought into the ark, and all that stood before him he left upon the earth. And a lioness came with her two whelps, male and female, and the three crouched before Noah. And the two whelps rose up against the lioness and smote her, and made her flee from her place. And she went away, and they returned to their places and crouched upon the earth before Noah. And the lioness ran away, and stood in the place of the lions. And Noah saw this and wondered greatly, and he rose and took the two whelps and brought them into the ark. And Noah brought into the ark from all living creatures that were upon the earth, so that there was none left but which Noah brought into the ark. Two and two came to Noah into the ark, but from the clean animals and clean fowls he brought seven couples, as God had commanded him. And all the animals and beasts and fowls were still there, and they surrounded the ark at every place. And the rain had not descended till seven days after. And on that day the Lord caused the whole earth to shake, and the sun darkened, and the foundations of the world raged, and the whole earth was moved violently. And the lightning flashed, and the thunder roared, and all the fountains in the earth were broken up, such as was not known to the inhabitants before, and God did this mighty act in order to terrify the sons of men, that there might be no more evil upon earth. And still the sons of men would not return from their evil ways, and they increased the anger of the Lord at that time, and did not even direct their hearts to all this. And at the end of seven days, in the six hundredth year of the life of Noah, the waters of the flood were upon the earth, and all the fountains of the deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And Noah and his household and all the living creatures that were with him came into the ark on account of the waters of the flood, and the Lord shut him in. And all the sons of men that were left upon the earth became exhausted through evil on account of the rain, for the waters were coming more violently upon the earth and the animals and beasts were still surrounding the ark. And the sons of men assembled together about seven hundred thousand men and women, and they came unto Noah to the ark. And they called to Noah, saying, Open for us, that we may come to thee in the ark, and wherefore shall we die? And Noah with a loud voice answered them from the ark, saying, Have you not all rebelled against the Lord, and said that he does not exist? And therefore the Lord brought upon you this evil, to destroy and cut you off from the face of the earth. Is not this the thing that I spoke to you of one hundred and twenty years back? and you would not hearken to the voice of the Lord, and now do you desire to live upon earth? And they said to Noah, We are ready to return to the Lord, only open for us that we may live and not die. And Noah answered them, saying, Behold, now that you see the trouble of your souls, you wish to return to the Lord. Why did you not return during these hundred and twenty years which the Lord granted you as the determined period? But now you come and tell me this on account of the troubles of your souls. Now also the Lord will not listen to you, neither will he give ear to you on this day, so that you will not now succeed in your wishes. And the sons of men approached in order to break into the ark, to come in on account of the rain, for they could not bear the rain upon them. And the Lord sent all the beasts and animals that stood around the ark, and the beasts overpowered them and drove them from that place, and every man went his way, and again they scattered themselves upon the face of the earth. And the rain was still descending upon the earth, and it descended forty days and forty nights, and the waters prevailed greatly upon the earth, and all flesh that was upon the earth or in the waters died, whether men, animals, beasts, creeping things, or birds of the air, and there only remained Noah and those that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed, and they greatly increased upon the earth, and they lifted up the ark, and it was raised from the earth. And the ark floated upon the face of the waters, and it was tossed upon the waters, so that all the living creatures within were turned about like pottage in the cauldron. And great anxiety seized all the living creatures that were in the ark, and the ark was like to be broken. And all the living creatures that were in the ark were terrified, and the lions roared, and the oxen lowed, and the wolves howled, and every living creature in the ark spoke and lamented in its own language, so that their voices reached to a great distance. And Noah and his sons cried and wept in their troubles. They were greatly afraid that they had reached the gates of death. And Noah prayed unto the Lord, and he cried unto him on account of this. And he said, O Lord, help us, for we have no strength to bear this evil that has encompassed us. 
for the waves of the waters have surrounded us, mischievous torrents have terrified us, the snares of death have come before us. Answer us, O Lord, answer us, light up thy countenance toward us and be gracious to us, redeem us and deliver us. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Noah, and the Lord remembered him. And a wind passed over the earth, and the waters were still, and the ark rested. And the fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters decreased in those days, and the ark rested upon the mountains of Ararat. And Noah then opened the windows of the ark, and Noah still called out to the Lord at that time, and he said, O Lord, who didst form the earth and the heavens and all that are therein, bring forth our souls from this confinement and from the prison wherein thou hast placed us, for I am much wearied with sighing. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Noah, and said to him, When thou shalt have completed a full year, thou shalt then go forth. And at the revolution of the year, when a full year was completed to Noah's dwelling in the ark, the waters were dried from off the earth, and Noah put off the covering of the ark. At that time, on the twenty-seventh day of the second month, the earth was dry, but Noah and his sons, and those that were with him, did not go out from the ark until the Lord told them. And the day came that the Lord told them to go out, and they all went out from the ark. And they went and returned every one to his way and to his place. And Noah and his sons dwelt in the land that God had told them. And they served the Lord all their days, and the Lord blessed Noah and his sons on their going out from the ark. And he said to them, Be fruitful, and fill all the earth. Become strong, and increase abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. End of chapter 6「Chapter Seven of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by C. J. Plogue. Chapter Seven. And these are the names of the sons of Noah: Japheth, Ham, and Shem. And children were born to them after the flood, for they had taken wives before the flood. These are the sons of Japheth: Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tiras seven sons, and the sons of Gomer were Askenaz, Rephath, and Tagarma, and the sons of Magog were Alichanath and Lubal, and the children of Madai were Echon, Zilo, Chazoni, and Lot, and the sons of Javan were Elisha, Tarshish, Chidim, and Dodonim, and the sons of Tubal were Arifi, Kassad, and Tari, and the sons of Meshrek were Didan, Zeron, and Shabashni, and the sons of Tiras were Benib, Gira, Lupirian, and Gilak. These are the sons of Japheth according to their families, and their numbers in those days were about four hundred and sixty men. And these are the sons of Ham, Cush, Mitzraim, Phut, and Canaan, four sons, and the sons of Cush were Seba, Havala, Sapta, Rema, and Saticha. And the sons of Ramah were Sheba and Diran. And the sons of Mitzraim were Lud, Enom, and Pethros, Chasloth, and Shaftor. And the sons of Phut were Gibal, Hedan, Bena, and Edan. And the sons of Canaan were Zidan, Heth, Amore, Gergashi, Hivi, Arki, Senai, Orodai, Zimodai, and Chemothai. These are the sons of Ham, according to their families and their numbers in those days were about seven hundred and thirty men. And these are the sons of Shem, Elam, Ashur, Arpashad, Lud, and Aram, five sons, and the sons of Elam were Shushan, Makhul, and Harmon. And the sons of Asher were Myrus and Mokil, and the sons of Arpashad were Shelach, Anar, and Ashkol. And the sons of Lud were Pithor and Bezayun, and the sons of Aram were Uz, Chul, Gather, and Mash. These are the sons of Ham, according to their families, and their numbers in those days were about three hundred men. These are the generations of Shem. Shem begat Arpashad, and Arpashad begat Shelach, and Shelach begat Eber, and to Eber were born two children, the name of one was Peleg, for in his days the sons of men were divided, and in the latter days the earth was divided. And the name of the second was Yoktan. 
meaning that in his day the lives of the sons of men were diminished and lessened. These are the sons of Yaktan, Amadad, Shelaf, Chazar Maveth, Yerak, Hadurum, Ozel, Dikla, Obal, Abimael, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Jobat. All these are the sons of Yaktan. And Peleg his brother begat Yen, and Yen begat Sirug, and Sirug begat Nahor, and Nahor begat Tira. And Tira was thirty-eight years old, and he begat Haran and Nahor. And Cush, the son of Ham, the son of Noah, took a wife in those days in his old age, and she bare a son, and they called his name Nimrod, saying, At that time the sons of men again began to rebel and transgress against God. And the child grew up, and his father loved him exceedingly, for he was the son of his old age. And the garments of skin which God made for Adam and his wife, when they went out of the garden, were given to Cush. For after the death of Adam and his wife, the garments were given to Enoch, the son of Jared, and when Enoch was taken up to God, he gave them to Methuselah, his son. And at the death of Methuselah, Noah took them and brought them to the ark, and they were with him until he went out of the ark. And in their going out, Ham stole those garments from Noah, his father, and he took them and hid them from his brothers. And when Ham begat his firstborn Cush, he gave him the garments in secret, and they were with Cush many days. And Cush also concealed them from his sons and brothers, and when Cush had begotten Nimrod, he gave him those garments through his love for him, and Nimrod grew up, and when he was twenty years old, he put on those garments. And Nimrod became strong when he put on the garments, and God gave him might and strength, and he was a mighty hunter in the earth. Yea, he was a mighty hunter in the field, and he hunted the animals, and he built altars, and he offered upon them the animals before the Lord. And Nimrod strengthened himself, and he rose up from amongst his brethren, and he fought the battles of his brethren against all their enemies round about. And the Lord delivered all the enemies of his brethren in his hands, and God prospered him from time to time in his battles, and he reigned upon the earth. Therefore it became current in those days, when a man ushered forth those that he had trained up for battle, he would say to them, like God did to Nimrod, who was a mighty hunter in the earth, and who succeeded in the battles that prevailed against his brethren, that he delivered them from the hands of their enemies, so may God strengthen us and deliver us this day. And when Nimrod was forty years old, at that time there was a war between his brethren and the children of Japheth, so that they were in the power of their enemies. And Nimrod went forth at that time, and he assembled all the sons of Cush and their families, about four hundred and sixty men, and he hired also from some of his friends and acquaintances about eighty men, and he gave them their hire, and he went with them to the battle. And when he was on the road, Nimrod strengthened the hearts of the people that went with him. And he said to them, Do not fear, neither be alarmed, for all our enemies will be delivered into our hands, and you may do with them as you please. And all the men that went were about five hundred, and they fought against their enemies, and they destroyed them and subdued them, and Nimrod placed standing officers over them in their respective places. And he took some of their children as security, and they were all servants to Nimrod and to his brethren, and Nimrod and all the people that were with him turned homeward. And when Nimrod had joyfully returned from battle, after having conquered his enemies, all his brethren together with those who knew him before assembled to make him king over them, and they placed the regal crown upon his head. And he set over his subjects and people, princes, judges, and rulers, as is the custom amongst kings. And he placed Terah, the son of Nahor, the prince of his host, and he dignified him and elevated him above all his princes. And whilst he was reigning according to his heart's desire, after having conquered all his enemies around, he advised with his counselors to build a city for his palace, and they did so. And they found a large valley opposite to the east, and they built him a large and extensive city. And Nimrod called the name of the city that he built Shinar, for the Lord had vehemently shaken his enemies and destroyed them. And Nimrod dwelt in Shinar, and he reigned securely, and he fought with his enemies, and he subdued them, and he prospered in all his battles, and his kingdom became very great. 
and all nations and tongues heard of his fame, and they gathered themselves to him, and they bowed down to the earth, and they brought him offerings, and he became their lord and king. And they all dwelt with him in the city of Shinar, and Nimrod reigned in the earth over all the sons of Noah, and they were all under his power and counsel. And all the earth was of one tongue, and words of union, but Nimrod did not go in the ways of the Lord, and he was more wicked than all the men that were before him, from the days of the flood until those days. And he made gods of wood and stone, and he bowed down to them, and he rebelled against the Lord, and taught all his subjects and the people of the earth his wicked ways. And Mardon his son was more wicked than his father. And every one that heard of the acts of Mardon the son of Nimrod would say concerning him, From the wicked go forth wickedness. Therefore it became a proverb in the whole earth, saying, From the wicked goeth forth wickedness, and it was current in the words of men from that time to this. And Terah, the son of Nahor, prince of Nimrod's host, was in those days very great in the sight of the king and his subjects. And the king and princes loved him, and they elevated him very high. And Terah took a wife, and her name was Amthelo, the daughter of Cornebo. And the wife of Terah conceived and bare him a son in those days. Terah was seventy years old when he begat him, and Terah called the name of his son that was born to him Abram, because the king had raised him in those days, and dignified him above all his princes that were with him. End of Chapter 7 Chapter 8 of the Book of Jasher This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by C.J. Plogue And it was in the night that Abram was born, that all the servants of Terah, and all the wise men of Nimrod, and his conjurers came and ate and drank in the house of Terah, and they rejoiced with him on that night. And when all the wise men and conjurers went out from the house of Terah, they lifted up their eyes toward heaven that night to look at the stars. And they saw, and behold, one very large star came from the east and ran in the heavens. And he swallowed up the four stars from the four sides of the heavens. And all the wise men of the king and his conjurers were astonished at the sight. And the sages understood this matter, and they knew its import. And they said to each other, This only betokens the child that has been born to Terah this night, who will grow up and be fruitful and multiply and possess all the earth, he and his children forever, and he and his seed will slay great kings and inherit their lands. And the wise men and conjurers went home that night, and in the morning all these wise men and conjurers rose up early and assembled in an appointed house. And they spoke and said to each other, Behold, the sight that we saw last night is hidden from the king. It has not been made known to him. And should this thing get known to the king in the latter days, he will say to us, Why have you concealed this matter from me? And then we shall all suffer death. Therefore let us go and tell the king the sight which we saw, and the interpretation thereof, and we shall then remain clear. And they did so. And they all went to the king and bowed down to him to the ground, and they said, May the king live, may the king live. We heard that a son was born to Terah, the son of Nahor, the prince of thy host, and we yesternight came to his house, and we ate and drank and rejoiced with him that night. And when thy servants went out from the house of Terah to go to our respective homes to abide there for the night, we lifted up our eyes to heaven and saw a great star coming from the east, and the same star ran with great speed and swallowed up four great stars from the four sides of the heavens. And thy servants were astonished at the sight which we saw, and were greatly terrified. And we made our judgment upon the sight, and knew by our wisdom the proper interpretation thereof, that this thing applies to the child that is born to Terah, who will grow up and multiply greatly and become powerful, and kill all the kings of the earth, and inherit all their lands, he and his seed forever. And now, our Lord and King, behold, we have truly acquainted thee with what we have seen according to this child. If it seemeth good to the King to give his father value for this child, we will slay him before he shall grow up and increase in the land, and his evil increase against us, that we and our children perish through his evil. And the King heard their words, and they seemed good in his sight, and he sent and called for Terah, and Terah came before the King. And the King said to Terah, I have been told that a son was yesternight born to thee, 
and after this manner was observed in the heavens at his birth. And now therefore give me the child that we may slay him before his evil springs up against us, and I will give thee for his value thy house full of silver and gold. And Terah answered the king and said to him, My lord and king, I have heard thy words, and thy servant shall do all that his king desireth. But my lord and king, I will tell thee what happened to me yesternight that I may see what advice the king will give his servant, and then I will answer the king upon what he has just spoken. And the king said, Speak. And Terah said to the king, Aon, son of Morig, came to me yesternight, saying, Give unto me the great and beautiful horse that the king gave thee, and I will give thee silver and gold, and straw and provender for its value. And I said to him, Wait till I see the king concerning thy words, and behold, whatever the king saith, that will I do. And now, my lord and king, behold, I have made this thing known to thee, and the advice which my king will give unto his servant, that will I follow. And the king heard the words of Terah, and his anger was kindled, and he considered him in the light of a fool. And the king answered Terah, and he said to him, Art thou so silly, ignorant, or deficient in understanding to do this thing, to give thy beautiful horse for silver and gold, or even for straw and provender? Art thou so short of silver and gold that thou shouldest do this thing, because thou canst not obtain straw and provender to feed thy horse? And what is silver and gold to thee, or straw and provender, that thou shouldest give away that fine horse which I gave thee, like which there is none to be had on the whole earth? And the king left off speaking, and Terah answered the king, saying, Like unto this has the king spoken to his servant. I beseech thee, my lord and king, What is this which thou didst say unto me, saying, Give thy son, that we may slay him, and I will give thee silver and gold for his value? What shall I do with silver and gold after the death of my son? Who shall inherit me? Surely then at my death the silver and gold will return to my king who gave it. And when the king heard the words of Terah and the parable which he brought concerning the king, it grieved him greatly, and he was vexed at this thing, and his anger burned within him. And Terah saw that the anger of the king was kindled against him, and he answered the king, saying, All that I have is in the king's power. Whatever the king desireth to do to his servant, let him do. Yea, even my son, he is in the king's power, without value in exchange. He and his two brothers that are older than he. And the king said to Terah, No, but I will purchase thy younger son for a price. And Terah answered the king, saying, I beseech thee, my lord and king, to let thy servant speak a word before thee, and let the king hear the word of his servant. And Terah said, Let my king give me three days' time till I consider this matter within myself, and consult with my family concerning the words of my king. And he pressed the king greatly to agree to this. And the king hearkened to Terah, and he did so, and he gave him three days' time. And Terah went out from the king's presence, and he came home to his family, and spoke to them all the words of the king, and the people were greatly afraid. And it was in the third day that the king sent to Terah, saying, Send me thy son for a price, as I spoke to thee, and shouldst thou not do this, I will send and slay all thou hast in thy house, so that thou shalt not even have a dog remaining. And Terah hastened, as the thing was urgent from the king, And he took a child from one of his servants, which his handmaid had borne to him that day, and Terah brought the child to the king and received value for him. And the Lord was with Terah in this matter, that Nimrod might not cause Abram's death, and the king took the child from Terah, and with all his might dashed his head to the ground, for he thought it had been Abram. And this was concealed from him from that day, and it was forgotten by the king as it was the will of the providence not to suffer Abram's death. And Terah took Abram his son secretly, together with his mother and nurse, and he concealed them in a cave, and he brought them their provisions monthly. And the Lord was with Abram in the cave, and he grew up. And Abram was in the cave ten years, and the king and his princes, soothsayers and sages, thought that the king had killed Abram. End of chapter 8「Chapter Nine of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by C. J. Plogue. Chapter Nine. 
And Haran, the son of Terah, Abram's oldest brother, took a wife in those days. Haran was thirty-nine years old when he took her, and the wife of Haran conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Lot. And she conceived again and bare a daughter, and she called her name Milcah. And she again conceived and bare a daughter, and she called her name Sarai. Haran was forty-two years old when he begot Sarai, which was in the tenth year of the life of Abram. And in those days Abram and his mother and nurse went out from the cave, as the king and his subjects had forgotten the affair of Abram. And when Abram came out from the cave, he went to Noah and his son Shem, and he remained with them to learn the instruction of the Lord and his ways. And no man knew where Abram was, and Abram served Noah and Shem his son for a long time. And Abram was in Noah's house thirty-nine years, and Abram knew the Lord from three years old, and he went in the ways of the Lord until the day of his death, as Noah and his son Shem had taught him. And all the sons of the earth in those days greatly transgressed against the Lord, and they rebelled against him, and they served other gods, and they forgot the Lord who had created them in the earth, and the inhabitants of the earth made unto themselves, at that time, every man his god, gods of wood and stone which could neither speak, hear, nor deliver, and the sons of men served them, and they became their gods. And the king and all his servants, and terror with all his household, were then the first of those that served gods of wood and stone. And Terah had twelve gods of large size made of wood and stone, after the twelve months of the year, and he served each one monthly, and every month Terah would bring his meat offering and drink offering to his gods. Thus did Terah all the days. And all that generation were wicked in the sight of the Lord, and they thus made every man his god, but they forsook the Lord who had created them. And there was not a man found in those days in the whole earth who knew the Lord, for they served each man his own god, except Noah and his household, and all those who were under his counsel knew the Lord in those days. And Abram the son of Terah was waxing great in those days in the house of Noah, and no man knew it, and the Lord was with him. And the Lord gave Abram an understanding heart, and he knew all the works of that generation were vain, and that all their gods were vain, and were of no avail. And Abram saw the sun shining upon the earth, and Abram said unto himself, Surely now this sun that shines upon the earth is God, and him will I serve. And Abram served the sun in that day, and he prayed to him, and when evening came the sun set as usual, and Abram said within himself, Surely this cannot be God? And Abram still continued to speak within himself, Who is he who made the heavens and the earth? Who created upon the earth? Where is he? And night darkened over him, and he lifted up his eyes towards the west, north, south, and east. And he saw that the sun had vanished from the earth, and the day became dark. And Abram saw the stars and moon before him, and he said, Surely this is the God who created the whole earth as well as man. And behold, these his servants are gods around him. And Abram served the moon and prayed to it all that night. And in the morning when it was light and the sun shone upon the earth as usual, Abram saw all the things that the Lord God had made upon the earth. And Abram said unto himself, Surely these are not gods that made the earth and all mankind, but these are the servants of God. And Abram remained in the house of Noah, and there knew the Lord in his ways, and he served the Lord all the days of his life. And all that generation forgot the Lord and served other gods of wood and stone, and rebelled all their days. And King Nimrod reigned securely, that all the earth was under his control, and all the earth was of one tongue and words of union. And all the princes of Nimrod and his great men took counsel together, Phut, Mitzraim, Cush, and Canaan with their families, and they said to each other, Come, let us build ourselves a city, and in it a strong tower, and its top reaching heaven. And we will make ourselves famed, so that we may reign upon the whole earth, in order that the evil of our enemies may cease from us, that we may reign mightily over them, and that we may not become scattered over the earth on account of their wars. And they all went before the king, and they took the king these words, and the king agreed with them in this affair, and he did so. And all the families assembled, consisting of about six hundred thousand men, and they went to seek an extensive piece of ground to build the city and the tower, 
and they sought in the whole earth, and they found none like one valley at the east end of Shinar, about two days' walk, and they journeyed there, and they dwelt there. And they began to make bricks and burn fires to build the city and the tower that they had imagined to complete. And the building of the tower was unto them a transgression and a sin. And they began to build it. And whilst they were building against the Lord God of heaven, they imagined in their hearts to war against him and to ascend into heaven. And all these people and all the families divided themselves in three parts. The first said, We will ascend into heaven and fight against him. The second said, We will ascend to heaven and place our own gods there and serve them. And the third part said, We will ascend to heaven and smite him with bows and spears. And God knew all their works and all their evil thoughts. And he saw the city and the tower which they were building. And when they were building, they built themselves a great city and a very high and strong tower. And on account of its height, the mortar and bricks did not reach the builders in their ascent to it until those who went up had completed a full year. And after that, they reached to the builders and gave them the mortar and bricks. Thus was it done daily. And behold, these ascended and others descended the whole day. And if a brick should fall from their hands and get broken, they would all weep over it. And if a man fell and died, none of them would look at him. And the Lord knew their thoughts, and it came to pass when they were building, they cast the arrows toward the heavens, and all the arrows fell upon them filled with blood. And when they saw them, they said to each other, Surely we have slain all those that are in heaven. For this was from the Lord in order to cause them to err, and in order to destroy them from off the face of the ground. And they built the tower and the city, and they did this thing daily until many days and years were elapsed. And God said to the seventy angels who stood foremost before him, to those who were near to him, saying, Come, let us descend and confuse their tongues, that one man shall not understand the language of his neighbor. And they did so unto them. And from that day following they forgot each man his neighbor's tongue, and they could not understand to speak in one tongue. And when the builder took from the hands of his neighbor lime or stone which he did not order, the builder would cast it away and throw it upon his neighbor that he would die. And they did so many days, and they killed many of them in this manner. And the Lord smote the three divisions that were there, and he punished them according to their works and designs. Those who said, We will ascend to heaven and serve our gods, became like apes and elephants. And those who said, We will smite the heaven with arrows, the Lord killed them, one man through the hand of his neighbor. And the third division of those who said, We will ascend to heaven and fight against him, the Lord scattered them throughout the earth. And those who were left amongst them, when they knew and understood the evil which was coming upon them, they forsook the building, and they also became scattered upon the face of the whole earth. And they ceased building the city and the tower. Therefore he called that place Babel, for there the Lord confounded the language of the whole earth. Behold, it was at the east of the land of Shinar. And as to the tower which the sons of men built, the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up one third part thereof. And a fire also descended from heaven and burnt another third, and the other third is left to this day. And it is of that part which was aloft, and its circumference is three days' walk. And many of the sons of men died in that tower, a people without number. End of chapter 9「Chapter 10 of the Book of Jasher This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by C. J. Plogue. Chapter 10 And Peleg, the son of Eber, died in those days, in the forty-eighth year of the life of Abram, son of Terah, and all the days of Terah were two hundred and thirty-nine years. And when the Lord had scattered the sons of men on account of their sin at the tower, behold, they spread forth into many divisions and all the sons of men were dispersed into the four corners of the earth. And all the families became each according to its language, its land, or its city. And the sons of men built many cities according to their families, in all the places where they went and throughout the earth where the Lord had scattered them. And some of them built cities in places from which they were afterward extirpated, and they called these cities after their own names, or the names of their children, or after their particular occurrences. And the sons of Japheth, the son of Noah, went and built themselves cities in the place where they were scattered. 
and they called all their cities after their names, and the sons of Japheth were divided upon the face of the earth into many divisions and languages. And these are the sons of Japheth according to their families, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tiras. And these are the children of Japheth according to their generations. And the generation of Gomer according to their cities were the Francum who dwelt in the land of Franza by the river Franza by the river Sina. And the children of Rephath are the Bartonim who dwell in the land of Bartonia by the river Leda, which empties its waters in the great sea Gihon, that is Oceanus. And the children of Tugarma are ten families, and these are their names, Buzar, Parzunak, Belgar, Elikanum, Ragbib, Tarki, Big, Zibuk, Ongal, and Tilmaz. All these spread and rested in the north and built themselves cities, and they called their cities after their own names. Those are they who abide by the rivers Hithla and Italak unto this day. But the families of Angoli, Belgar, and Puzunak, they dwell by the great river Dubni. And the names of their cities are also according to their own names. And the children of Javan are the Javanim, who dwell in the land of Macedonia. And the children of Madai are the Orelum, that dwell in the land of Kherson. And the children of Tubal are those that dwell in the land of Tuscana, by the river Pasha. And the children of Meshach are the Shubashni, and the children of Tiras are the Rushash, Kushni, and Angolis. All these went and built themselves cities. Those are the cities that are situated by the sea Jabos, by the river Cura, which empties itself in the river Tragon. And the children of Elisha are the Almanim, and they also went and built themselves cities. Those are the cities situated between the mountains of Job and Shabathmo. And of them were the people of Lombarde, who dwell opposite the mountains of Job and Shabathmo. And they conquered the land of Italia, and remained there until this day. And the children of Chittim are the Romim, who dwell in the valley of Canopia by the river Tibru. And the children of Dudonim are those who dwell in the cities of the sea Gihon in the land of Bordna. These are the families of the children of Japheth according to their cities and languages, when they were scattered after the tower, and they called their cities after their names and occurrences. And these are the names of all their cities according to their families, which they built in those days after the tower. And the children of Ham were Cush, Mitzraim, Phut, and Canaan, according to their generation and cities. All these went and built themselves cities as they found fit places for them, and they called their cities after the names of their fathers Cush, Mitzraim, Phut, and Canaan. And the children of Mitzraim are the Ludim, Anamim, Lehabim, Naphtuchim, Pathrusim, Kasluchim, and Kafturim, seven families. All these dwell by the river Sihor, that is the brook of Egypt, and they built themselves cities and called them after their own names. And the children of Pathros and Kasluk intermarried together, and from them went forth the Pelishtim, the Azathim, and the Gerarim, the Githim, and the Ekronim, in all five families. These also built themselves cities, and they called their cities after the names of their fathers unto this day. And the children of Canaan also built themselves cities, and they called their cities after their names, eleven cities and others without number. And four men from the family of Ham went to the land of the plain. These are the names of the four men, Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboiim. And these men built themselves four cities in the land of the plain, and they called the names of their cities after their own names. And they and their children and all belonging to them dwelt in those cities, and they were fruitful and multiplied greatly and dwelt peaceably. And Seir, the son of Hur, son of Hive, son of Canaan, went and found a valley opposite to Mount Paran, and he built a city there. He and his seven sons and his household dwelt there, and he called the city which he built Seir, according to his name, that is, the land of Seir unto this day. 
These are the families of the children of Ham according to their languages and cities when they were scattered to their countries after the tower. And some of the children of Shem, son of Noah, father of all the children of Eber, also went and built themselves cities in the places wherein they were scattered, and they called their cities after their names. And the sons of Shem were Elam, Ashur, Arapashad, Lud, and Aram. And they built themselves cities and called the names of their cities after their names. And Asher, son of Shem, and his children and household went forth at that time, a very large body of them, and they went to a distant land that they found, and they met with a very extensive valley in the land that they went to. And they built themselves four cities, and they called them after their own names and occurrences. And these are the names of the city which the children of Asher built, Nineveh, Rezin, Kalak, and Rehobothar. And the children of Asher dwell there unto this day. And the children of Aram also went and built themselves a city, and they called the name of the city Uz, after their eldest brother, and they dwelt therein. That is the land of Uz to this day. And in the second year after the tower, a man from the house of Asher, whose name was Bela, went from the land of Nineveh to sojourn with his household, wherever he could find a place. And they came until opposite the cities of the plain against Sodom, and they dwelt there. And the man rose up and built there a small city, and called its name Bela after his name, that is the land of Zor unto this day. And these are the families of the children of Shem, according to their language and cities, after they were scattered upon the earth after the tower. And every kingdom, city, and family of the families of the children of Noah built themselves many cities after this. And they established governments in all their cities in order to be regulated by their orders. So did all the families of the children of Noah forever. End of chapter 10、chapter、eleven of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter、eleven. And Nimrod, son of Cush, was still in the land of Shinar, and he reigned over it and dwelt there, and he built cities in the land of Shinar. And these are the names of the four cities which he built, and he called their names after the occurrences that happened to them in the building of the tower. And he called the first Babel, saying, Because the Lord there confounded the language of the whole earth. And the name of the second he called Arek, because from there God dispersed them. And the third he called Eshed, saying, There was a great battle at that place. And the fourth he called Kalna, because his princes and mighty men were consumed there. And they vexed the Lord, they rebelled and transgressed against him. And when Nimrod had built these cities in the land of Shinar, he placed in them the remainder of his people, his princes and his mighty men that were left in his kingdom. And Nimrod dwelt in Babel, and he there renewed his reign over the rest of his subjects. And he reigned securely, and the subjects and princes of Nimrod called his name Amraphel, saying that at the tower his princes and men fell through his means. And notwithstanding this, Nimrod did not return to the Lord, and he continued in wickedness and teaching wickedness to the sons of men. And Mardon his son was worse than his father, and continued to add to the admonitions of his father, and he caused the sons of men to sin. Therefore it is said, From the wicked goeth forth wickedness. At that time there was war between the families of the children of Ham as they were dwelling in the cities which they built. And Chedorlaomer, king of Elam, went away from the families of the children of Ham, and he fought with them, and he subdued them. And he went to the five cities of the plain, and he fought against them, and he subdued them, and they were under his control. And they served him twelve years, and they gave him a yearly tax. At that time died Nahor, son of Serug, in the forty ninth year of the life of Abram, son of Terah, and in the fiftieth year of the life of Abram, son of Terah. Abram came forth from the house of Noah and went to his father's house. And Abram knew the Lord, and he went in his ways and instructions, and the Lord his God was with him. And Terah his father was in those days still captain of the host of King Nimrod, and he still followed strange gods. And Abraham came to his father's house and saw twelve gods standing there in their temples, and the anger of Abram was kindled when he saw these images in his father's house. And Abram said, As the Lord liveth, these images shall not remain in my father's house. 
so shall the Lord who created me do unto me, if in three days' time I do not break them all. And Abram went from them, and his anger burned within him. And Abram hastened and went from the chamber to his father's outer court, and he found his father sitting in the court, and all his servants with him. And Abram came and sat before him. And Abram asked his father, saying, Father, tell me where is God who created heaven and earth, and all the sons of men upon the earth? And who created thee and me? And Terah answered his son Abram, and said, Behold, those who created us are all with us in the house. And Abram said to his father, My lord, shew them to me, I pray thee. And Terah brought Abram into the chamber of the inner court. And Abram saw, and behold, the whole room was full of gods of wood and stone, twelve great images and others less than they without number. And Terah said to his son, Behold, these are they which made all thou seest upon earth, and which created me and thee and all mankind. And Terah bowed down to his gods, and he then went away from them. And Abram his son went away with him. And when Abram had gone from them, he went to his mother and sat before her. And he said to his mother, Behold, my father has shown me those who made heaven and earth, and all the sons of men. Now therefore hasten and fetch a kid from the flock, and make of it savory meat, that I may bring it to my father's gods, as an offering for them to eat. Perhaps I may thereby become acceptable to them. And his mother did so, and she fetched a kid, and made savory meat thereof, and brought it to Abram. And Abram took the savory meat from his mother, and brought it before his father's gods. And he drew nigh to them, that they might eat. And Terah his father did not know of it. And Abram saw on the day when he was sitting amongst them, that they had no voice, no hearing, no motion, and not one of them could stretch forth his hand to eat. And Abram mocked them, and said, Surely the savory meat that I prepared has not pleased them, or perhaps it was too little for them, and for that reason they would not eat. Therefore tomorrow I will prepare fresh savory meat better and more plentiful than this, in order that I may see the result. And it was on the next day that Abram directed his mother concerning the savory meat, and his mother rose and fetched three fine kids from the flock, and she made of them some excellent savory meat such as her son was fond of, and she gave it to her son Abram, and Terah his father did not know of it. And Abram took the savory meat from his mother, and brought it before his father's gods into the chamber, and he came nigh unto them that they might eat. And he placed it before them, and Abram sat before them all day, thinking perhaps they might eat. And Abram viewed them, and behold, they had neither voice nor hearing, nor did one of them stretch forth his hand to the meat to eat. And in the evening of that day, in that house, Abram was clothed with the Spirit of God. And he called out and said, Woe unto my father and this wicked generation, whose hearts are all inclined to vanity, who serve these idols of wood and stone, which can neither eat, smell, hear, nor speak, who have mouths without speech, eyes without sight, ears without hearing, hands without feeling, and legs which cannot move. Like them are those that made them, and that trust in them. And when Abram saw all these things, his anger was kindled against his father, and he hastened and took a hatchet in his hand, and came unto the chamber of the gods, and he broke all his father's gods. And when he had done breaking the images, he placed the hatchet in the hand of the great god, which was there before them, and he went out. And Terah his father came home, for he had heard at the door the sound of the striking of the hatchet. So Terah came into the house to know what this was about. And Terah, having heard the noise of the hatchet in the room of images, ran to the room to the images. And he met Abram going out. And Terah entered the room and found all the idols fallen down and broken, and the hatchet in the hand of the largest, which was not broken. And the savory meat which Abram his son had made was still before them. And when Terah saw this, his anger was greatly kindled, and he hastened and went from the room to Abram. And he found Abram his son still sitting in the house, and he said to him, What is this work thou hast done to my gods? And Abram answered Terah, his father, and he said, Not so, my lord, for I brought savory meat before them, and when I came nigh to them with the meat that they might eat, they all at once stretched forth their hands to eat, before the great one had put forth his hand to eat. And the large one saw their works that they did before him, and his anger was violently kindled against them, and he went and took the hatchet that was in the house, and came to them, and 
broke them all, and behold, the hatchet is yet in his hand, as thou seest. And Terah's anger was kindled against his son Abram when he spoke this. And Terah said to Abram his son in his anger, What is this tale that thou hast told? Thou speakest lies to me. Is there in these gods spirit, soul, or power to do all thou hast told me? Are they not wood and stone, and have I not myself made them? And canst thou speak such lies, saying that the large god that was with them smote them? It is thou that didst place the hatchet in his hands, and then sayest he smote them all. And Abram answered his father, and said to him, And how canst thou then serve these idols, in whom there is no power to do anything? Can those idols in which thou trustest deliver thee? Can they hear thy prayers when thou callest upon them? Can they deliver thee from the hands of thy enemies? Or will they fight thy battles for thee against thy enemies? That thou shouldst serve wood and stone which can neither speak nor hear. And now surely it is not good for thee nor for the sons of men that are connected with thee to do these things. Are you so silly, so foolish? or so short of understanding that you will serve wood and stone and do after this manner? And forget the Lord God who made heaven and earth and who created you in the earth, and thereby bring a great evil upon your souls in this matter by serving stone and wood? Did not our fathers in the days of old sin in this manner, and the Lord God of the universe brought the waters of the flood upon them and destroyed the whole earth? And how can you continue to do this and serve gods of wood and stone who cannot hear or speak or deliver you from oppression, thereby bringing down the anger of the God of the universe upon you. Now therefore, my father, refrain from this, and bring not evil upon thy soul and the souls of thy household. And Abram hastened and sprang from before his father and took the hatchet from his father's largest idol, with which Abram broke it and ran away. And Terah, seeing all that Abram had done, hastened to go from his house, and he went to the king, and he came before Nimrod, and stood before him. And he bowed down to the king, and the king said, What dost thou want? And he said, I beseech thee, my lord, to hear me. Now fifty years back a child was born to me, and thus has he done to my gods, and thus has he spoken. And now therefore, my lord and king, send for him, that he may come before thee, and judge him according to the law, that we may be delivered from his evil. And the king sent three men of his servants, and they went and brought Abram before the king. And Nimrod and all his princes and servants were that day sitting before him, and Terah sat also before them. And the king said to Abram, What is this that thou hast done to thy father and to his gods? And Abram answered the king in the words that he spoke to his father, and he said the large god that was with them in the house did to them what thou hast heard. And the king said to Abram, had they power to speak and eat and do as thou hast said? And Abram answered the king, saying, And if there be no power in them, why dost thou serve them, and cause the sons of men to err through thy follies? Dost thou imagine that they can deliver thee, or do anything small or great, that thou shouldst serve them? And why wilt thou not serve the God of the whole universe, who created thee, and in whose power it is to kill and to keep alive? O oh, foolish, simple, and ignorant king, woe unto thee for ever! I thought thou wouldst teach thy servants the upright way, but thou hast not done this, but hast filled the whole world with thy sins and the sins of thy people who have followed thy ways. Dost thou not know, or hast thou not heard, that this evil which thou doest our ancestors sinned therein, in days of old, and the eternal God brought the waters of the flood upon them and destroyed them all? and also destroyed the whole earth on their account? And wilt thou and thy people rise up now and do like unto this work, in order to bring down the anger of the Lord God upon the universe, and to bring evil upon thee and the whole earth? Now therefore put away this evil deed which thou doest, and serve the God of the universe as thy soul is in his hands, and then it will be well with thee. And if thy wicked heart will not hearken to my words to cause thee to forsake thy evil ways and to serve the eternal God, then thou wilt die in shame in the latter days, thou thy people and all who are connected with thee, hearing thy words or walking in thy evil ways. And when Abram had ceased speaking before the king and princes, Abram lifted up his eyes to the heavens, and he said, The Lord seeth all the wicked, and he will judge them. End of chapter 11